Hello and welcome to High Five. Today I want to talk to you on this topic called Leave Them Up to God, for vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Have you ever heard about a soldier, World War II soldier, by the name of Louis Zamperini? As a matter of fact, his life story is put together in a movie that is called Unbroken. It is a marvelous movie of stamina and of courage, and I'll encourage you, if you ever get an opportunity to view this, take advantage of it and view this movie. But let me tell you a little bit about Louis Zamfarini. He was born on January 26th, uh, the year 1917, and he died on July the 2nd, and that is 2014. He lived to the ripe old age of 97 years. Now here is a synopsis of his biography and also the movie. During World War II, Zamperini served as a 24 B-24 Liberator Bombardier in the Army Air Corps, that is the U.S. Army Air Corps, and he spent subsequently 47 days lost at sea. On May 27, 1943, Zamperini and his fellow castaways survived on rainwater and the occasional captured bird or fish. Their weight dropped below 100 pounds. Zamperini endured torment as a prisoner of war. After being held for some time, about six weeks in the island of Kawajilian, Zamperini was shipped to the Japanese mainland and eventually confined to three different interrogation centers and uh, POW or prisoner of war camps. Over the next two years, he suffered from disease, exposure, starvation, and near-death beatings from guards. The Japanese corporal by the name of Mitsuhuryu Wantanabe was also nicknamed the bird by the other prisoners of war. Particularly, this man took great delight in torturing Zamperini. Mitsuhuru pounded Zamperini with anything that he could lay his hands on, whether it be clubs, baseball clubs, belts, fists, and he regularly threatened to kill him. It is said on one occasion when Zamperini was out in the open camp, he had Zamperini hold a wooden beam, a heavy wooden beam above his head and threatened to shoot him if he would drop it. On another occasion, he forced Zamferini and the other POWs, American POWs, to punch each other until they were nearly all knocked unconscious. The Japanese tried to use Zamperini as a propaganda tool. Later on, when he was released, Zamperini went back to the United States of America and he testified that he was saved from his post-traumatic stress after he became a Christian in the Billy Graham Crusade in Los Angeles in 1949. In 1950, Zamperini returned to Japan for the first time since his liberation to address the Japanese war criminals held in Sugamo prison in Tokyo. While there, he shook hands and embraced many of his old and familiar gods. Mutsuhoro Wantanabe had avoided capture, but Zamperini later wrote a letter forgiving his former tormentor and uh, his tormentor nemesis and even unsuccessfully tried to meet up with him while in Japan for the 1998 Winter Olympics. Now, brothers and sisters, in all his mistreatments by his enemy, he was never embittered and he never showed any resentment 
to his tormentors and to those who pounded him. Neither did he seek revenge. He simply handed his tormentors and his distractors over to God because he believed that God was better in dealing with his tormentors than he can. Now, I'd like for you to stay with me because I feel I have a word for some of you who are hurting because of mistreatment, because of advantage that has been taken on you, because advantage has been taken on a loved one. Maybe a loved one was shot and killed and you see no way of seeking justice and you were hurting badly. It was just a couple of days ago I heard on the television or I viewed on the TV where a woman in Penal was weeping for her brother because someone walked up and shot him dead and she was saying he is the only one I have in this world and I want justice. I want something to happen. I want to take the time to invite you to stay with me for this video cast and I want to remind you again that in Zamperini's case with all that he went through he never was bitter or never sought revenge on all his distractors and his tormentors. What we could say about Zamperini is he was a man of a big heart and a forgiving spirit who knew the secret of trust in God because he saw God as the one who will justify him and indeed the Lord had justified him. Our Lord Jesus is the supreme example of one that was mistreated and beaten and taken advantage of but yet he forgive all his distractors and his enemies. While dying on the cross he said, Father forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. It was St. Peter in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 22 to 24 who wrote this for us in scriptures so that we can remember it. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. And if you read the Gospels very carefully, you would read our Lord saying this to his followers. Do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him also have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and he send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors and the sinners doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than other sinners? But do not Think, do not hold resentment. Do not even the pagans favor their friends. Be perfect, therefore, our Lord says, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And as I said earlier on, I might be speaking to someone who is suffering hurt and deep pain because of advantage that has taken place over your life or the life of a loved one. People have done you harm and have done you wrong and you're seeking vengeance. You are seeking justice as you may call it, but you would like in some way to get even with those who have wronged you. Listen to me, this is a word of God for you at this time, my brothers and sisters. You see, our natural tendency when we are taken advantage of 
is to want payback, is to seek revenge. And especially when we are hurt and maliciously gossiped and talked about and taken advantage, even to the point where some have suffered the loss of a loved one. We want those people to be hurt worse than they have hurt us. We talk about getting even and settling the score with them. But my brothers and sisters, I believe I have a word for you. I want to share with you why you shouldn't take that route. And listen very carefully because this is the word of God and the word of God is true. Reason number one and why you should not take the way of hiring a bounty killer or getting somebody to gun down somebody or seeking revenge or doing wrong to somebody is vengeance is the work of God and it is not yours. This is what St. Paul tells us in the 12th chapter of Romans and verses 19 and 21 and he says, Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. You see, God knows inside, outside. God knows all the circumstances. God has all the information that is necessary to bring judgment and justice and to seek your help and your position. The Lord is your helper and the Lord will stand on your ground. The Lord says, I will repay. And believe me, God is not grand charging. He said, I will repay. He saw the hurt that was done in your life, the rumors, the lies that was spread about you. And the Lord is not sleeping, as we would say, but he will come through it for you. On the contrary, the Bible says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, you have to leave room for God to take vengeance, for it is written, it is mine. You do not take this on your hand. God knows how to take revenge or vengeance better than you can. So leave room for God to deal with those who are malicious and spiteful towards you. Leave God plenty, plenty, plenty room, plenty time and space. Leave God plenty of his methods in which he can handle this. His ways are past finding out. The Lord has ways in handling these issues that you don't know about. So don't dictate to God how and when he must act. As I said, and as we say, God is not sleeping. Leave room for God and he'll deal with it. God will certainly deal with it. But let me move on. Why we should not take this vengeance in our hand? Because there is a better way of getting even than vengeance. The word of God says in verse 20, On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. On the contrary, St. Paul says. What an amazing word. On the contrary, you are to do the very opposite of taking vengeance. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. We are not to lynch or plan the debt or the misfortunes of our enemies. We are not to stick pins on them like the voodoo witchcraft people. Neither are we to go to seek uh, witchcraft on them because God is your rewarder. We are not to send them threatening letters or poisonous letters. We are not to spread around nasty stories about them but continually pray for those who despitefully use you. Let me move on to the third reason why you should not take vengeance in your hand because vengeance will destroy you. It is a powerful 
tool so you can handle it. It will destroy you, but good will overcome evil. Paul ends this mighty chapter with these words, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And that is in verse number 31. When Paul says, Do not be overcome by evil, what he means is, Don't let revenge eat you up and destroy your life. You might think it has taken too long for vengeance, but the wheels of justice, God's justice, it turns slowly and surely. And it might seem like it has taken forever, but God is a good God, good, and at the same time, He is just, and He will stand on your behalf. And getting even doesn't work. What happens when you try to get even? You unleash the whole cycle of retribution and vengeance. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Don't go there. Do not try to contract wicked people to beat up people who have done you wrong. You will, that will backfire on you. Put every matter by prayer and supplication in the hands of God Almighty. It never ends because someone else always want to get in the last word. And there is a very practical reason behind St. Paul's advice to the Roman Christian. You see, you may win the battle, but you may never win the war. You may get even, and you might even get the last word or the last strike. You may get the last strike, and you may land the last blow. But in the end, you will hurt yourself because you are doing something that you are not supposed to do. Leave that to God. He says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. My question to you is, do you carry hurt in your life? And it might be something legitimate. You have been minding your own business. You are a good person and there is no need for people to take advantage of you. Maybe you have been hurt by a sibling, a brother or a sister, or a relative, an uncle or aunt, or could be a parent, or a friend, or somebody has done you wrong, or maybe somebody just came out of the blue, out of the blues, and strike at you and hurt you. And there is in enormous pains in your life and sleepless nights and there are so many chemical reaction in your life you can hardly contain yourself and so many times you just cry yourself to sleep so many times you feel the heavy burden of this pressure upon your life but as we say God watches over the righteous there is never my brother and sister, a cross that is too heavy for you to carry. Now, some people have objection to this kind of a message, and they might say, um, are you asking me to forgive those who have taken advantage of me? Are you telling me that I should just sit down and take it easy like that? And I am saying, put the matter in the hands of the Lord. Do not make it your matter. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. In the second place, you are saying, I am being hurt. Are you telling me just to walk on? Yes, I'm telling you to walk on. But first, leave your burdens at the cross. Leave it there. Let the Lord take care of that. The wrong, the way that people have defrauded you and have taken away maybe your possession, your friend, and have caused drift and strife, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And the third objection that I hear sometimes is we should never let someone bear the consequences, or we should always allow someone to bear the consequences of their sins. And you know that is true people will bear the consequences of their sin. They might seem to be like 
They are getting away for the time, but it will catch up with them. Proverbs 19 and 19 says, A hot-tempered man must pay the penalty. A hot-tempered man must pay the penalty. If you rescue him, you will have to do it again. So see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God that he has given to you. You want to live a life of freedom and happiness and in spite of all that you have felt that has piled up on your life. And sometimes you just feel like sinking or going out of existence. My dear brothers and sisters and to those whom I might be addressing today, stand firm. Listen, the Lord loves you and he's talking to you to this message. You have maybe lost a loved one, somebody killed murdered, shot, killed a relative or a friend, and the pain is deep. It may be this happened years ago, but the pain and the scars are still there. We serve a God who never slumber nor sleep. The Bible tells us that one of, thing, one of the things that we must avoid is bitterness. It said, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God that no bitterness springing up and causes trouble and many become defiled. Don't continue that way. Try to keep bitterness from coming up in your life. And one of the ways to avoid that is to confess your sin and bring your burden to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Proverbs 12 and 16, it says, A prudent man overlooks an insult. A prudent man overlooks insults. In Psalm 68 and verses 1 or 2, this is the prayer of King David when he was pursued by his enemies. He said, Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. You see, the Lord knows all about taking vengeance. He's a master at that, and he knows exactly how to do that. But at the same time, he's a God who is gracious and long-suffering. And I want to encourage you to pray. Pray for those who have wronged you and look for opportunities to do good. Pray for those who don't want you to make progress in your life. Pray for those who oppress you mentally, emotionally, and physically. Pray for those who give evil counsel to others about you. Sit down and talk about you. Pray for those who cannot stand your prosperity. Pray for those who smile with you openly, but secretly plan evil against you. Pray for those who mock you behind your back. Pray for those who pose as good friends, but they are ravening wolves behind your back. Pray for those who think that you could never make it without them. Let them know that God is your helper. Pray for those who attack you without a cause. Pray for those who seek your downfall because God is your glory and the lifter up of your head. Join with me in this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I am following the example of our Lord Jesus' command and that is to pray for my enemies. I ask first that you would saturate my life with the Holy Spirit, power, and might. Send your love flowing through me and forgive me for holding on to anything that could hinder my prayers. Release any unforgiveness or bitterness or thoughts of revenge or hateful emotions that can quench your spirit in my heart. Then give me wisdom as I seek to bless to love and to pray for my enemies in the name of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, again, I want to repeat, 
God isn't sleeping. Who keep, who, he who keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. And your heavenly Father is watching over you. If you have never, first of all, made a commitment to our loving Jesus, to be your Lord and to be your Savior, you can do so now. It doesn't take very much. It takes an acknowledgement and a confession with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and he is your Savior. Simply say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you as my Savior and Lord. You entered the cross and died a vicarious death for my sin. I acknowledge you as my Lord and my Master. Come into my life and let me know what it means to be born again. You will pray this prayer. You will pray this prayer in faith. It's a good prayer. God hears your prayer. It doesn't have to be long or pretentious. Let us help you walk in this life. If there are matters that you would like to discuss with us, please free to contact us here at High Five. There, are email, there is an email address, I am sure, on your screen, and there are numbers that you can call. This program is coming to you with the prayer and the good wishes of Mission Tabernacle of William and Waterlane Streets in Princess Town, Trinidad, West Indies. The lead pastors are Noellen and Annecy McIntosh with their two other uh, elders there, Hayden Joseph and Selwyn Mohammed. They would certainly love to hear from you. This program has been uh, produced by the competent and able Aaron Jones, and I thank him for doing such a marvelous job. My prayer is that you would lift up your head, allow the Lord to be your glory and the lifter up of your head. Do not seek revenge, leave them up to God. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord.